Welcome, welcome, welcome. Well, 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 um, I guess this video could be considered a bit controversial, but it's really not meant to be. Um, it's meant to be a bit thought-provoking, but not controversial. Okay, and, and as always, I could be wrong. Drop your comments. Um, I, I always appreciate that. Okay, well, I've noticed a complete 360 in philosophy since Steve Cohen has bought the New York Mets. And that as it relates to the New York Yankees and how they're being run. Now, the New York Yankees in the last decade, 13, 14 years, they haven't won anything really. They haven't won the World Series since 2009. And they've had a lot of failure and a lot of, a lot of, lot, a lot of messy things going on. Because we know, and this is something I do envy, in with the New York Yankees, it's World Series or bust. So if they don't win the World Series... Each year has to be considered a failure, and that is the philosophy that I want the New York Mets to adopt soon. Now, if you hear me say this, I want you to recognize that I talk about the Yankees um, as a as a fan of the New York Mets, but I have a brother who's a close fan of, of the New York Yankees growing up. There's been a lot of fights growing on between the both of us, and I always admired the successful Basically, history of the New York Yankees. Always admired that. With that being said, um, I want to get into the the new approach of the Yankees as it relates to the Mets. Before I do that, um, if you like videos that are thought-provoking, if you're an MLB fan, especially a Mets fan, please like, please subscribe. We're continuing to grow the channel, and that is really because of you. Um, and even if you uh, disagree, I, I, I admire that. So if you're a person who disagrees with perspective, Again, another reason for you to like, subscribe, and share. Okay, uh, I'm not one of those guys who think I'm right all the time. Just a portion of the time. Okay, so as it relates to the Yankees, I've noticed a huge shift. In 2020, 2019, uh, obviously the Yankees signed Garrett Cole. That was a huge signing. They had been missing their ace for quite some time. They've been going to the playoffs, getting eliminated by the Astros, but... They were missing something. They really were. And the philosophy of the Yankees is they don't have to spend a lot of money to be successful. As per the biggest example in the division, you see the Rays. Success year after year after year. Um, they know how to do it. So the Yankees never felt that they had to be ultra-aggressive. Two years ago when Aaron, Ru uh, Aaron, Ru Aaron Judge was a year out from free agency, the Yankees offered an insulting contract of about, I think it was like $220 million. It was well below Aaron Judge's uh, value. Uh, reason being is because they felt that he was approaching his age 30 season. He was often injured um, and that he, they were still giving him a lot of money. And they figured that he would take a discount coming back to the Yankees. It turned out that wasn't the case. But that low ball contract was really right in line with, with the Yankees and how they did business. But in the last year or so, especially after the Rodon signing, I think budgeting is thrown out the window. They know right now with Steve Cohen across the river that they have a billionaire who right now, especially after hiring David Stearns, and David Stearns is, is a marker because now in the first couple of years, the Mets didn't have proper uh, management set up. They didn't have a proper front office. This is the first time since Steve Cohen has owned the team where they have a president who knows what they're doing, a president who's innovative, a president who has been successful uh, at building a winner, a consistent winner in Milwaukee with virtually no resources. Now with the resources of Steve Cohen, I, I mean, the battle for New York is in front of us right now. And I, I think Hal um, really realizes that. Brian Cashman realizes that. Brian Cashman is in a way fighting for his job and it is now or never. We take over the city now. We're, in a, we're basically a couple years ahead of the Mets. But he knows they have a lot of respect for David Stearns. They know that they are going up against a formidable, formidable um, president in David Stearns who has the backing of Steve Cohen, who has the most resources in baseball. So it's either now or never. Now, you see their uh, pitching is extremely important, obviously, in winning. They traded away a lot of pitching in the Juan Soto trade. But if you're going to acquire a guy like Juan Soto, one of the best players in the game, you have to give up talent. And I don't believe they gave up a monumental amount of talent, but they gave up a lot of pitching depth. 
Okay, so they acquired Juan Soto, which was a monumental acquisition to go along with Aaron Judge in the lineup. Um, hopefully, Gene Carlos Stanton, for their sake, produces somewhat. He's making a boatload of money. But you stack those two guys, three, four, Aaron Judge and Juan Soto, you could argue that those two are the best two hitters in the middle of the lineup out of all the baseball. You can argue that. You really can. I know you have um, you know, Dodgers, Shohei Otani, Mookie Betts. That's probably number two or number one, depending on how you look at it. But again, this is a different tack. The Yankees were more conservative uh, before the Steve Cohen ownership. They didn't spend as much money frivolous, frivolously. Uh, Carlos Rodon last year. They offered Blake Snell a contract this year after, um, you know, all their other acquisition and knowing they have to pay Juan Soto next year. So, wow, are they going to have a $400 million payroll in the future? I mean, literally, if they pay Juan Soto, if they somehow got a Blake Snell or they somehow find a way to secure that number three pitcher, and it seems like they're willing to pay up, they offered Blake Snell at least $150 million. This is a complete 360, like I'm saying, they weren't like this before 2019, 2020. They were more conservative. They kept saying that you don't have to spend a lot of money. But now not only are they spending money on their stars with the Blake Snell signing, they were going to spend money on the number three starting pitcher. So that is just a crazy shift. And like I said, I feel it's all because they know that they have to be dominant in New York City, and they have another mammoth presence in the city, and a mammoth present with leadership now and guidance in David Stearns. Now, David Stern recently went on, um, he did a short interview with Andy Martino, and there has been a lot of debate about what is going on with the New York Mets offseason. Uh, the New York Mets Yes, they spent like $60, $70 million this offseason, but they didn't get the big fish. They didn't get Yamamoto. They didn't make an offer to Shohei Otani. In the eyes of a lot of Mets fans, including myself, we didn't have a high grade and we didn't win the offseason. But David Stearns, and he said it to Andy Martino because Andy Martino was kind of nudging him like, yeah, how do you feel about this offseason? Expecting or insinuating that, hey, buddy, it hasn't been a great offseason. What do you think about it? But David Stearns, very collectively and very intelligently said it's not about winning the offseason. It's about winning during the season and getting to the playoffs and, you know, obviously winning in the playoffs. Um, so that is a big shift from last year. Obviously, last year we won the offseason. Where did that get us? Where did that get us? The worst, we had one of the worst seasons travesty spending almost 400 million dollars and being out by june i mean that is a travesty so david stearns basically has a lot of um ammunition to say that it is not about winning the offseason it is certainly not so andy martino went on to say well david what is your goal for 2024 and david stearns who's been consistent in his last couple of interviews has said as the New York Mets, our goal is to always make the playoff. Little different than the Yankees. The Yankees, the goal is to always win the World Series. That's their bar. Hopefully, we get to that bar in the next couple of years. But right now, we are building a foundation with David Stearns and the New York Mets. We are building a foundation so that we can be a formidable opponent year after year after year. Consistency is key. Not just winning in 2022 and in putting a putrid, pathetic performance in 2023. 2022, we won 101 games. It is not acceptable to win that many games and the next year be horrible, horrible. I mean, the Dodgers, although they only won one time in the last 15 years or one time since, I, I believe, 88, um, at least they've been building, uh, building on something. And you can see where they're building. Um, and that really takes me to my last point. And this is probably... I would say the most significant point. So there was an article that came out and said that the Mets are setting up the 2025 offseason to do what the Dodgers did this offseason. So in the article, it said that the Mets, um, and this information was gotten through an insider. It says an insider reveals that the Mets are setting up for a 2025 Dodgers offseason, which I don't know. That could be just... 
And I could have said that. I could have said that just based upon how the piece is, because if you look at the fact, the fact is the Mets are going to be shedding a heck of a lot of payroll. Um, uh, they could be shedding to almost a payroll of about 150 million. Uh, that being said, the payroll is close to 330 million. That is a lot of money falling off the book. So just by looking virtually at the money falling off the books, the Mets are going to have a lot of money available to them to spend. Okay. So that's, they have the funds available. That's number one. Now, number two, are they going to be set up uh, mentality-wise? They're going to have a one year to evaluate the franchise from the minors to whoever's on the um, major league roster. They're going to have a year to evaluate which players are going to be future players with the Mets. So that really lines up. And then also you have the Pete Alonso question because um, I think that that is going to mean um, – mean a lot to the fans R- really is. And, and it doesn't really, if, if the fans are going to be hurt by losing Pete, but David Stearns thinks that either trading Pete or not signing Pete is going to benefit the Mets long-term, then I, I think that it doesn't really matter how the Mets fans feel at the time, because it's all about the Mets being successful in the future. Uh, but I really think that there's going to be a calculus going into this. And what I mean by that is I think that we're going to have an evaluation the first couple of months. If if Stearns thinks that this is a team to build up on, I think that signing Pete could be an answer. But if David Stearns evaluates our team in the first couple of months and says, you know what, we need a whole heck of a lot of work. We're not a Pete Alonzo um, you know, signing him next year uh, because Pete's 30 years old. He's going to be 30 years old once we sign him to that contract. So if we sign him to a six, seven year contract, um, is Pete going to be in year three or four by the time we are competitive? So Stearns has to determine when are we going to be competitive? Oh, can we be competitive in t- 2025 or 2026? If, if it's 2025 where he sees us being competitive with like the additions next offseason, yeah, I mean, signing Pete would be monumental. But if he doesn't think that that is realistic, that's where we're paying Stearns the big money. And that's where we have to trust in Stearns, even though it's hard. It's hard for me to trust in Stearns. But at the end of the day, Stearns was an extremely highly touted uh, baseball guy who's been successful in Milwaukee, one of the toughest places to be successful in all of baseball. I don't care what anybody says. The man went to the playoffs five times in eight years. And you're like, oh, okay, that division's not great. Well, in the previous 30 years, the Card- uh, not the Cardinals, the um, the Brewers went to the playoffs three times in 30 years and in five times in eight years with Stearns. So, I mean, you have to give the guy's guy credit. You do. You really have to give the guy credit. Now, um, last but not least, I do feel a signature move is coming for Stearns. Uh, is that going to be free agent or is it going to be a trade? I don't think it's going to be a free agent because there's nobody that I think Stearns would really want to attach himself to. Nobody that th- is that grand, that great, that that much of a difference maker. So I believe the difference, ma- uh, the signature move is either going to come this year in the form of a trade or it's going to come next year in a form of a free agent signing. But truth be told, a signature move will be coming. If you do remember the signature move, um, with Stearns in Milwaukee was acquiring Chris, Christian Yelich. That was when Christian Yelich was in his MVP form. Um, so a, a lot of GMs, they do it. Even when, and I've mentioned this in videos ago, even when Jared Porter became the general manager of the New York Mets years ago, he acquired Francisco Lindor. A lot of these GMs slash presidents like to put their stamp on an organization, like to put their certain move. Um, and, and, and that's what I feel. Drop a comment. What do you think about that? What do you think the signature move is going to be for Stearns? I have a video coming up on that um, soon. Uh, I'm still trying to figure out like what could be potential options because I'm looking towards next year too. I want to uh, uh, evaluate that. But um, hey, if you stuck, if you if you really stayed in the video this long, you value my opinion. I appreciate that. Please like, subscribe. We got a lot more videos to come. And um, again, I appreciate you from the bottom of my heart, and I will speak to you very soon. Let's go Mets. And again, any Yankee fans that did see this, I didn't really mean to offend, just more or less some critical thinking. You could disagree. I actually love disagreement. I welcome it. I will speak to you very soon. Have a great day. Hopefully everybody's enjoying the 2024.